All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Daily Huddle. I want to start us off with a, a, a tradition that we have here on the team. It's a joke that we always start off with. And um, Gio, I got a question for you, man. <laughs> What's the question, man? The question is, why is teamwork so important? Why is teamwork so important? I don't know. Because it helps you put the blame on someone else, man. Good morning, good morning, good morning. One more time. Good morning. Welcome to the good Daily morning. Huddle. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hopefully you feel the energy that I feel over here. You know, energy is everything, and you got to be present. You got to be present. And, you know, one question that I have here for you is, where are you? Andrea, where are you? I am right where I need to be, Alvin. Right here. Got it. Got it. So you're right here. And, and, and Gio, man, what time do you have over there? Right. Now. Right now? Yeah. Like, did you look on your watch? Did you look at your clock? Or you just know the time is now? Now. I looked at it and it says now. Okay, it said now. Mine did say now, too. And um, I tell you what, who would like to answer this? What are you grateful for today? What are you grateful for? Well, I, I am grateful for Melville, Georgia. All right. All right. You know, I just had my trainer just left and we did our workout for an hour and a half. And I'm so grateful for my trainer and I'm so grateful for family. So today, the question is, is your future income a lottery ticket? That's something to think about, right? Some people got a hope plan. Some people have a wish plan. Some people have, I think I'm going to make it plan. Some people have, I hope I don't run out of money plan. Some people have a government plan. What is your plan? Are you going to buy some lottery scratch offs? Are you going to just bank on the lottery that everybody in your family birthday numbers hit? You got to have a plan. But most importantly, you got to have a coach. See, a lot of times we try to Google things and we try to research. We call it quote unquote. I did some research. Yeah, you did a Google search on the first page. That's not research. Oh, I had a cousin or an uncle that tell, told me, this is how you save money. Ah, uh, but you don't have any money saved. Where are you getting your financial wisdom? I don't want to say financial advice. Where are you getting your financial wisdom? I never heard somebody say, hey, man, you gave me some bad wisdom. But I hear people say, you gave me some bad advice. But when it comes to our money, remember, money is emotional. Okay, everybody, money brings out the emotion in people. Sometimes the feeling of money is like a tea bag. When you put a tea bag in hot water, the real flavor comes out. So the real flavor comes out when a person has money and a person do not have money. Um, today, let me share with you some ideas. Let me share with you some ways that's going to really have you thinking about reliable income, not just lottery income. Okay, can everybody see my screen over there? You should see something that says the seven money milestones. Can everybody see that? Give me thumbs up. Okay, perfect. One thing that we do, we walk every client, every student. You got to be a student first before you be a client. See, some people think, oh, I just need to be a client with somebody. No, you have to be a student and learn. And that's why we teach financial education. See, some people say, I got the seven-step program to losing weight. Well, you know how to lose weight. Eat less money and work out more. I mean, eat, eat less food, eat less money. That's so funny. Eat less food, right, and work out more. But when it comes to money, save more money, spend less. It's pretty simple, but we messed that simple formula up. Second thing we look at is the proper protection. Make sure your family is protected. Right. And then the number three is emergency fund. How did you handle your last emergency? Did you use a credit card? Did you call your uncle Jim? 
Did you call your auntie married? Did you call a brother or sister? Or you had money saved, right? Um, debt management. Why are people in debt? We buy things we really don't need to impress people who really don't care. Or there was an emergency. Then number five, everybody, you got to have cash flow coming in, right? Cash flow got to come in um, every month, every week. You got to have more additional income coming in. Because if you don't have more income coming in now, how are you going to save more money for the future? Some people say, well, man, I have student loans. I got credit cards. I have bills. I got a light bill, a gas. We all have that. But you have to save money and pay yourself first. So today I'm going to shine the light on number six, building wealth, but in the form of retirement, right? And also I want you to protect your wealth. That's milestone number seven. As you can see on the screen, there's a little mountain right there, right? You got to climb the seven money milestones mountain. So let's talk about some generations here and how are the generations are doing. These are characters from the book, How Money Works. No generation is saving enough. Nobody. It means nobody. You're not supposed to use the word nobody or anybody or sometimes. Well, nobody. Well, let's see. Millennials, they got 23,000 saved for retirement. That's the median, not the average, okay? The median, that's the middle number. See, the average, you can have somebody with so much money and somebody with so less throws the numbers off. We want the middle number. Generation X, that's my age group. Now I'm one year into Generation X. I'm one year away from millennials. So I'm, I'm a Gen X, but we only have $66,000 median retirement. The baby boomers are 152,000. Well, let's think of this. How long will $152,000 last? Well, can you hear me? Okay. Cool. Yes. Okay, cool. So how long will your money last? Well, last I checked, the baby boomers are buying Teslas. Last I checked, the baby boomers, right? Um the baby boomers are buying iPhones. Last I checked, the baby boomers are not just driving an Oldsmobile and not knocking you if you still drive an Oldsmobile or a Cutlass. They are really innovating. And some baby boomers are not downsizing. You know, they're buying a high rise or they're buying bigger houses and land. So it's a different game than what we were told, right? Now, I want you to know this. How many years can you go before you run out of money? Well, let's take a look at that. Here's an airplane with one wing. How many of you would get on this airplane with me? Come on, Gio, get on the airplane, man. We got one good wing, and I think we will not make it. So just imagine, right? The captain says, all aboard, get on the plane to your retirement. And you got so-so unsecurity. That's about 40% of the retiree's income. Okay, you, let's say in this example, you have $195,000. Okay, ooh, hmm. And you're getting 5% interest. How much money will that pay you every year? Well, why 5%? Because there's something called the 5% rule. If you take 5% of your money, right, every year, you should not run out of money. Well, let's take a look at it. What if we can build another plane, I mean, another wing, but we don't want to build it while it's in the air, right? We want to build it while it's on the ground. So you would need about 80% of your, your pre-retirement income to live on if you want to maintain that lifestyle. So as we go through this journey, everyone, will your savings run out in retirement? See, so-so unsecurity may be there for you. And you got to notice how I said that. So, so unsecurity, um, insufficient income. What does that really mean? Like you don't have money. I don't have it. I'm on a budget. I don't have the money. I'm on a fixed budget. No, we can't go on that vacation. We don't have the funds. You don't want to be that person. So if you think about it, social security was never designed to be your only source of income. You want freedom. You want lifestyle. You want more hope for a brighter day. Now, if you look at it, Social Security, 401k, compounding over time, and then you add reliable income. Do you have reliable income? 
Well, what's reliable income? Income you can rely on, right? Do you have the rule of 72 working for you or against you? Something to think about. And then when your money grows, the number one of the big threats, and I'm going to say number two threat is taxes. Number one is a health concern. So let's take a look at taxes right quick. The impact of taxes, okay, the seed versus the harvest. If you put $10,000 into an account at 29 years old, and you said you got 9% annual return, you would have a quarter million by age 65. So you always have the seed and the harvest. Do you want to pay taxes on the seeds or do you want to pay taxes on the big old harvest? See, you're not the only one waiting for that money to grow. Uncle Sam is waiting for it too. So having your money, you know, your initial $10,000 in that principle is the seed. I'd rather you pay taxes on the seed. You don't want to pay taxes on the harvest. Well, there's three ways money can be taxed. Number one, tax now. So when your money is growing, you pay taxes along the way. Okay, tax later would be more tax deferred, tax postponed, tax forever. Um, you can't get out of it because when your money grows, yeah, you got a tax break. But when you have that harvest, you got to pay taxes on the harvest. Or there's something called tax never, tax advantage, tax free. So when your money is growing, you pay no tax. And that distribution, when you pull the money to yourself, there's no taxes as long as you follow the rules. Everybody think about that. So would you rather have a $10,000 deposit tax or 1.6 million tax if that's the potential income? Hmm. Well, as Dana says, she's one of our characters from the book here. You know, strategies to take control of your financial future, not the lottery, okay? Not the scratch off. You know, it's not gonna be like the, um, that show my granddaddy used to watch, um, like the Beverly Hillbillies or um, Jed Clamper. You're not going to find all in your backyard. It's just not going to happen, right? Tax-free growth. Yes, I want that. Zero market risk. Yes, give me that too. Put that in the buggy. Tax-free income. I love it. Creditor-free in most states, long-term care, and tax-free legacy. See, if you have the right coach, then you don't pay taxes in the future. But if you don't have the right coach, then you will pay so much money in taxes, it will be unbearable. So what are the benefits of having a coach and having a tax-free strategy? Well, I, I highly encourage you find somebody that can help you with a tax-free strategy. So if you think about our baby boomers, right? According to a recent medical study, people are 50% likely to die within 20 years when they lose 75% or more of their total wealth because mentally they feel they cannot survive. They can't survive. Now, a few more things. There's a 54% chance you will run out of money in your 30-year retirement, withdrawing 6% of your annual income. Well, I know some people say, well, I'm smart. I'm smarter than the rest of the baby boomers. Okay, yes, okay, cool. As long as I have a nice portfolio, blend, I'll be good. I'll have a stock and bond investment portfolio fund. Okay, great. But there's a chance you're gonna run out of money. Who wants to take that chance? For you, the answer is the big question here. Do you have reliable income? Do you have a reliable strategy? Will your 401k be enough? Will social security be enough? It's not guaranteed like a pension. You gotta create your own personal pension. So how do you avoid running out of money in retirement? Well, there's something in the equity or something that you may have that makes money goes up and down. But also, you got to make sure that you protect against downside risk. You don't need to be 65 years old and worried about losing money. You got other things to worry about, not losing money or running out of money. And so if you think about it, it's called a rise strategy here, right? Reliable income strategy. You have upside potential, but we take away the, we take away the downside risk. Take it away. So wait a minute. You mean to tell me there's vehicles out there that I can ride the market and grow my money and guarantee at least 5% and eliminate all risks? Yes, you can do that. If you have the right vehicle, the right philosophy, the right coach. I don't think Google is a philosophy, right? I don't think that's going to work for most people. So if the market drops, it guarantees a 5% or higher. So the market goes up. Guess what? If it goes past five, you get that. But your floor is five. 
Do you have reliable income, everyone? Are you ready to transform your financial future, your financial income? And here's the question, will you have enough? Will you have enough money? And where are you putting that money? Those are just some things to really think about and some things to consider. Do you have control? Do you have control of your money? Do you have control of your finances? Do you have control of your future income? And that's it for today, everyone. I wanted to give you the best 15 minutes on reliable income. And I wanted to share with you some ideas and some things you know, and you're doing good. And there are some things that you need some work on. You know you need some work on it. What kind of retirement do you want? Not knocking anybody. Do you want to go on vacations and host and host um, the family retreats and host holidays and you, you're the go-to person for the family? Or you want to be that one standing in line somewhere with Velcro shoes on fighting for a senior citizen discount on Wednesday? It's up to you. Geo, any questions, man? Does anybody have a question? Hopefully today was a conversation to make you think, will I have enough? And it's my future retirement, a lottery ticket. I don't think it is. So the floor is open for questions, everyone. I am here for you. Please let me know any questions, any concerns. Alvin, that's just really great. What, what, one of the, the things that it opens up every Monday for me, it's this, it's this uh, opportunity to anchor myself back to uh, bringing the future to today. There is, a, there is this natural, I suppose for myself, natural um, attitude or philosophy, if you will, that I'll figure it out when I get there. <laughs> you know, I'll figure it out when I'm, when I'm older, I'll figure out long-term care when I'm older, I'll figure out um, the interest rate that works for me, I'll figure out how, um, how to avoid the uh, Uncle Sam's impact to my wealth, I'll figure out later. And um, but but, what's it? Uh, what's that? What's it? What's it? We, we all say I'll figure it out later, but what is it? Yeah, and um, and what uh, what is it, and what this allows for for us or for me is to bring that it today, bring it today, right? Um, and so, I, and I and I think what it allows for, depending on where people are, for some of us is like, well, I don't have any money to worry about anything because what's tax of zero? <laughs> you know, like tax of zero is zero. So what do I care, right? But, uh, but for those of us who are at the zero stage, it's like, holy macaroni, you know, 20 years from now, I don't want to be at zero. So I, I want to have, I want to have these problems later because right now, this is, this is an issue, right? Yeah. And, um, and so, and for those of us who do have the 152,000 and sort of feel kind of comfortable with the, with the mattress money, it does allow to say, this is not enough. This is definitely not enough. And so it's, uh, so I appreciate the, um, the, the urgency to bring the future to now. You know? Because it's real. It is real. And Geo, instant gratification is, um, it's kind of like a drug, man. Some people are hooked on instant gratification, right? And, we got to make sure that we have future income and we got to give up some instant gratification because if we don't, then we will always say, I'll put it off later. We'll always say that. And, you know, five years go by, 10 years go by, 20 years go by. Next thing you know, you're 50, you're having your 50th birthday party. Now you're having your happy 60th birthday party. And you're like, wait a minute, I don't have any money. So the conversations we got to start having and we can't avoid the conversation of future income. But the, the out is like, oh, we'll get to it later. I'll talk about it later. And people kind of let it go. So it takes a strong coach to say, no, we're, we're not going to talk about it later. We're going to handle this right now. 
but nobody's really having those strong conversations because, oh, I'll be okay. Oh, I'll talk about it later. And it never happens. The longer we put off something to do, regardless of what it is, the most likely it will never happen. I read that somewhere. There's a law. It's, it's one of those under, universal laws. The longer we put something off, the most likely it will never get done or never happen. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, and I, it's like, um, and I bet since you are in the industry, and, and many years ago, I was in the industry myself. And whenever I had a, a chance, and let's say on average, I saw about 30 clients a month on average new people, maybe one one a day. It was sometimes more and guess sometimes less, but that was a good average that would see people. I would say 95%. There was no point in doing a financial plan because the red was so large. Yeah. Right? And so um so what I'm hearing in what you're saying, Alvin, and I, you know, I don't know if this is uh maybe a good direction for Mondays as well is that so many, many of us are not planning for the future, if you will, because maybe we're so resigned about the now. We're so resigned about what's possible in the future because right now is so, it's, it's so not cool. You know, my, yeah. my situation right now is so not cool. I mean, dead 50, 50,000, 30,000, I can't even hear planning. So I think maybe we also, we should try to shift the hope, right? And, yes. and responsibility, if you will, hope and responsibility in the context of building in the building well. What do you hear, Sorel? Uh, Alvin. Yes, sir. There are some people on Facebook who would love to be in contact with you. What would be the best way for them to contact you? Um, the best way would be email for right now. I will put my email in the chat. I'm and not we'll sure post if they it can on see Facebook. It. Yeah. I'm putting it in there right now. Also, everybody, I want to share this. There's something called tough love, right? And there's something called sugar coating. We live in a sugar coating world right now. And it's time to be real and it's time to have accountability like no other. So I'll have permission from my clients. Do you want me to sugarcoat it? Or do you want me to tell it like it is? 99.9% .9 of the time, people will say, tell it like it is. But they can't handle tell it like it is. See, there is a reality of money and then there's a fairy tale of money. The reality of money is your current situation. We can change that with some discipline and some consistency and some coaching and some tough love and the working out hurts, saving money hurts, getting your yard together hurts. The hurt part, people got to get past it and build a new habit. Because if we don't save money today, money will not save us in the future. And, and I know we got to be present and we talk about being present, present all the time, but everybody, there's a, there's a reality, right? Here's a visual. You're on a rowboat, you're on a little boat singing a song or got your favorite music playing. And you're just, everything is good, but there's Niagara Falls. And you don't know that Niagara Falls is about a mile up and it's going to be a big old drop. That's some people retirement plan. They're, they think everything is good right now. And then Niagara Falls is right up there. And then they, they, they didn't see it coming. Don't act surprised when you don't have money in the future if you did not save money. Please don't act surprised. And don't act like anyone owes you anything from a government or family member perspective. Now, the world of coaching, and I know we have some coaches on this, on this Zoom and on this Facebook we have to add the money element in your coaching. I know you're helping people in life coaching. You're helping people in business coaching. You're helping people in health coaching. You're helping people in spiritual coaching. There has to be a money conversation by all coaches. Now, some of you may notice I am a certified life coach. 
I got that to help on the emotional part of the money. So we have to come together as coaches and direct people in the right direction because you can coach a person all day long. And if they don't change some money habits or have some more money coming in, it's not going to be much transformation because the money will always pull them back, pull them back to reality. So we got to have a light conversation of money and invite people to say, Hey, I know a coach that specializes in this. You may want to take a look at this. This can help us work together towards your bigger goal. Does that make sense, everyone? That makes complete sense, Evan. If I may just summarize what I heard you say, uh, before you, you can even think about retirement, it's essential to have money. Right? That's right. And, and, and before you can even think about retirement when you have money, it's essential to know how to grow it and make it work for you. Absolutely. In the right places without having as much market exposure or risk and still get the gains. Now, let me add to that. You got to have a philosophy that you go by. You got to have a strategy that you believe in, because if you don't, you're going to just do what everybody else does. You're going to follow the masses and everybody do not take the same prescription when they go to the doctor. The doctor doesn't say, hey, just dig in the barrel and get, get a blue pill and a red pill, man, and drink a lot of water. No, we have different prescriptions. We have different things with the seven money milestones going on. Um, if everybody took the same medication, then we would be in a mess, right? But we can't take the same financial medication. I hope that makes sense. You need to tell your doctor you need some vitamin M, vitamin money, some vitamin M. So put that on the prescription. Next time you go to your pharmacist, tell them you need some vitamin M. Very good. Well, all right, everyone. Well, this was a great session, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. And I love talking about conquering those seven money milestones. I love talking about the future. And sometimes I get in trouble because with myself, because I live in the future of future planning and I got to bring it back to be present. And, and most individuals have the opposite. They stay in the now and they never think about the future. So this is a good balance for me. And I love the fact that we will have future conversations, uh, future based conversations. We have to give the hope and transform our language because language, everything is recognized in our language. And you can tell if a person is on track for retirement just based on a few conversations. So yeah, everybody got a poker face, right? They got the cards. They don't let you see their cards. I'm broke card. I'm suffering card. I need help card. I got a lot of debt card, but they look so good on Sunday. They look so good on Facebook, but I see the cards and I want to help you make sure you be in the right direction. So everybody, that's our time today. Uh, make sure that you laugh and love more. You know, life is short. We got to make sure that we love more and laugh more. Don't take things for granted. You know, have fun, create new relationships, new connections, new conversations that will transform your future. Make sure you work out too. If you don't work out, dance. Okay, either one, work out or dance, do one or the other. Uh, make sure you eat your greens, right? And also take your fiber intake in, you know, that helps too. Whatever can bring you energy, you need it. So I work out and eat for energy. Okay. That's part of the, that's part of the plan. And everybody, you know, most importantly, pay yourself first, get in the habit of paying yourself first. Okay, everyone. That's my time today. Thank you for your time. I'll see each and every one of you at the top because the bottom is too crowded with excuses. Take care and God bless everyone. Talk to you soon. Thank you guys. That was awesome, Alvin. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow.